Alan Brockstein joins me now from 420 Invest. Alan, welcome back. Hey, good to be here, James. Alan, we've seen some earnings announced this week. We have Canopy, Canopy Growth announced earnings, Aurora Cannabis announced earnings, Canopy Rivers announced earnings. Uh, let's start with Aurora. What was your take on that, uh, on the financials? You know, it was, uh, obviously there was such a, a, a setup ahead. We all knew it was going to be bad. And uh, so fortunately, unlike a few quarters ago when they pre-announced and missed their pre-announcement, which was embarrassing, they actually came in line with what they talked about last week. And they had that extensive call last week and they basically covered pretty much everything. So, you know, maybe it's not that surprising that the stock has had a little bit of a relief rally. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I would say it's just too little too late at, uh, at, at Aurora and you know they promised us a year ago that uh, getting EBITDA positive was their priority and that they would get there and of course you know the market conditions were challenging and they didn't get there and so now they're in a much rougher place uh, I think there are a lot of people out there that think that they can't make it through and it's easy to get caught up in the pessimism and the capital crunch and all that and you know I, I think a lot of the bears have some good points, but I, I think a uh, couple of things that could happen. I, I think they'll probably struggle with uh, liquidity still uh, absent uh, uh, any sort of strategic investment, which I'll cover in a moment. But, uh, you know, they have the uh, ATM or at the money offering that they have been and will continue to tap. So, uh, you know, we'll see a little bit more dilution there. They have a little bit of bank debt uh, access, but it's small. So, so things look tight. And so, you know, investors probably shouldn't be surprised uh, if there's additional capital raising. Uh, but, you know, and of course they have nothing now or they would have done it and they'd say something, but there's always the chance of strategic investors. And, and if you just take take a step back and look at the valuation of Aurora and kind of where they are in their business, even though there's a lot of inefficiencies like there are in, in peers as well, the valuation is quite low if they were able to get the right strategic investor. Will it happen? I, I wish I could say yes. I, I can't guarantee that at all james but right so okay. uh, you know there's 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 a two-sided story on aurora i would say sure now canopy uh on the other hand had a decidedly good news uh, quarter in that they've swung to profitability or increased profitability on increased revenue 128 million i think for the quarter so so what's the uh, what's your outlook on the canopy story so I'm going to disagree with you. Increased profitability, you mean reduced losses, but I, then, then we can. So <laughs> In this remember, business, we'll take it. <laughs> can, can it be, let, look, let, let's just say one thing. Thank God it wasn't as bad as everybody else. I think everybody can agree on that. I, I would characterize today as a relief rally. I have read the press release. I've uh, gone over their uh, filings and I listened to the conference call. And I was a little surprised that we didn't get this quarter what I expect next quarter, which is going to be some write downs. And I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily, but uh, they, they were criticized uh, last quarter. Maybe it's because they have that big cash uh, balance and they, they don't feel the urgency that some of their peers are. But they were criticized last quarter for not right sizing their business. And they didn't really do it this quarter either. Although to their credit, they reduced their operating expenses somewhat. They're still very high their inventory actually increased again and on the call they said it's going to go up this quarter as well uh, many of your listeners may not have listened to the call but I, i'd say one of the big takeaways that i had was that they're only expecting modest growth in their fourth quarter which we're obviously halfway through uh, as of this day right. and uh so uh you know the near-term outlook isn't great there again i don't think the near-term outlook is what's going to drive these stocks in the long run. So it's good that the market knows that. But I, I think when they report it, I believe at the end of May is when they're planning. It's not due till the end of June that we'll see inventory write downs and asset write downs there as well. Uh, so you know they did use uh, about four hundred million dollars of cash between operations. Uh, I think that's right between operations and uh, in capital uh, expenditures. So I mean it, it is a huge fire uh, that, that gasoline is being poured on it. It's just a little bit less gasoline. And so their cash balance is still big and you have to look at their cash and their marketable securities, but it's shrinking very quickly. Uh, part of that shrink was due to things like the acreage tie up and uh, some acquisitions that they did. And then just one final interesting observation. Uh, you know, if you look at what Canopy Growth's revenue was, which I think was about 124 million, uh, about 
35% of it was ancillary, not from cannabis. And I'm not saying this is good or bad, but it's very different. Like if you look at Aurora as a peer, it's only a handful of million dollars. So, you know, Aurora did some acquisitions that I think were very questionable. And, uh, you know, a lot of what Canopy Growth did and the three big ones were a, a European pharmaceutical distribution called C3, which that's not, it's a, it's like synthetic cannabinoids for the most part. That was one. They did something, uh, a cosmetics company, uh, and I'm blanking out on the name on that one. And then uh, they also did Stores and Bickle, which is obviously cannabis related. This other cosmetics company, I, I know where they're headed with it, which is to have some cosmetics with mm. CBD or something like that. But interestingly, that company is, uh, is started by my neighbor's daughter. So, oh yeah, what's it called again? Uh, I, I, I actually haven't looked into. I hadn't had a chance to look into it. I just uh, heard that. I have it written down. I just typed the name. I'm just. It's eluding me. It's. It's not a company I've ever heard of. But those three companies, which I would argue, well, so stores in Bickle, that that's you know uh, vaporizers and stuff like that. That that that's in the same ballpark. But these other two, a little bit questionable. So the actual cannabis revenue for canopy growth was up only when you strip out returns and all that over the last couple of quarters was up really only modestly quarter to quarter compared to the uh, September quarter in December but it was much better than peers which you know we saw some of them shrink mm -hmm. right okay well so and then finally let's talk a bit about the uh, the problems of uh, of suppliers of cannabis cultivators getting paid by retailers I mean MedMen sort of brought the, the world's attention to the fact that, hey, right. one of the strategies to stay alive is to delay paying your suppliers, but the suppliers are not exactly flush with cash. So how is that playing out down in California? So I'm not able to really name names, uh, but I've done a lot of diligence after that came up in terms of, uh, you know, is this a MedMen only problem or is it an industry-wide problem? And, and unfortunately, it's an industry-wide problem. And uh, I'm hearing it in California and Nevada. I, like I said, it's all off the record, so I'm not able to name names. But we're talking about some serious cash problems. And, you know, as I try to dig into what's really going on, why aren't the dispensaries paying the suppliers? And the number one answer I hear is that cash is it's you know such a premium right now that they want to conserve it as long as they can. And, you know, the brands aren't in a great position to demand it. So it's really impacting a, a lot of companies. And we're going to see this show up in the financials, unfortunately. It's not the end of the world. And uh, I, I do expect the capital situation to get a little bit better uh, for many companies. But unfortunately, we're going to see, especially in California, we're going to see a lot of that market just die. Uh, and so anybody out there in California saying that they have a great brand and it's uh, you know, going to be profitable, you have to realize that there are some severe challenges in California. I was just in San Francisco for a conference last week, and I actually did some dispensary tours. Prices have come down a lot in Northern California. I, I, I don't, you know, that's just based on my own experience. In some ways, that's good. You know, the market's starting to compete with the uh, larger illicit market. We're starting to see some things like consolidation of, among the three regulators in California that could help. They're putting these QR codes on the windows. I, I don't think that's going to help. But the reality is it is not possible for a normal person to know if their dispensary is legal or illegal. And I would question whether or not they're going to scan a QR code which says so on the outside of the store. What I hope to see happen is uh, like uh, MJ Freeway, which is a Kerna, has a product uh, that goes, they did an acquisition and they'll have a product, they have a product that actu actually goes on to cannabis products so that I think this is a more viable solution, theirs or other people's, where you can actually scan uh, your product and make sure that your product is legitimate. And these are the kinds of things that I think uh, along with better enforcement and more stores being open that are legal will help California. Hmm. Interesting as ever. Thank you very much for joining us again, Alan. We'll have you back next week. Have a great right. Valentine's Sounds Day. Good, James. Take it easy. You bet.